Jujutsu Kaisen is possibly one of the most popular anime series out right now. Both the anime and manga have been dominating with crazy fights, beautiful animation, and some shocking twists along the way. And for a series this big, it was only a matter of time before we had the very first console game get released to put the power of Jujutsu in our hands. Unfortunately, the end result might not be exactly what you expected it to be. Now, I'm not here to totally crap all over Cursed Clash, but judging by everyone's opinions, there's clear clearly something wrong with it. And it could be the graphics, it could be the menus, or it could even be the gameplay itself. But regardless of what your reasons are for loving or hating it, today I want to break down things for myself and get into why this ended up being a disappointment to so many fans. And feel free to let me know your thoughts on Curse Clash in the comments because it's interesting to see what you guys think about it too. Starting off, we have to tackle the very first thing we see before we touch anything else. The main menu is indeed just a DVD menu that you'd see from the early 2000s. Not only are the icons laid out with no style at all, but the only the only other thing that you see below it is small clips from the opening of the anime. And I swear, whoever got paid to design this gotta get choke slammed because this just ain't it. Like y'all couldn't just do something using the in-game character models? Hell, take a look at the menu from Naruto Storm Connections. And it's nothing super fancy, but at least they use the character models in a unique way. Not just showing me 5 seconds of the opening for each menu option. But the fact that they didn't animate anything for the menu just gives you a taste of what you can expect going into the story mode. The story covers the first season of the anime plus the movie Zero. It would have been cool for us to get something more from season 2, but I'm guessing they wanted to hold off on that for a second game. Assuming that it actually gets a second game. The plot is told through static pictures and a bit of voice acting. And I've said this before, but this is the most simple and the laziest way to recap the moments from the story. I love when anime games go out of their way to retell the story in a unique fashion and create some brand new cutscenes for the fans. It's probably the biggest reason why CyberConnect 2 gets praise for the Storm games and the Hinokami Chronicles game. But nah, for this game, you'd be much better off watching the anime again for yourself since there's nothing special to see here. They do animate some scenes for major fights, but even even then, it doesn't even look that good. For example, I thought the famous hollow purple scene would look great animated, but it just looks really average. Like I've been seeing people say that the hollow purple item from Fortnite looks better than what they put in here, and I think they have a point. Not only that, but I've been seeing comparisons to the Roblox Jujutsu game, and um, that even looks better in some places. But I'll say that at least they did add in the voice actors, especially the English ones. <laughs> There's plenty of anime games that don't even try to get the English voice cast, so that's definitely a plus. I just wish they spent more of that budget to make a story mode that's worth our time. But even outside of that, the fighting is where I'm seeing the biggest divide between people who love and hate this game. On one hand, the people who love it say that combat is fun and it's great playing online against others. And hey, I'll admit that it can be a fun time if all you're looking for is to play as your favorite character and duke it out with others. Games don't always need to be complex to be fun, so I can at least agree that I had a good time here and there. But I think the biggest problem is that the amount of fun and replay value just ain't enough to justify a full $60 game. Had this dropped for $30, I don't think many people will be complaining based on the quality. The combat here is very floaty and it makes things tough when you try to string together combos. Knocking your opponent away with just one combo leads to you moon jumping your way back towards them to keep up the pressure. Most fighting games these days are much quicker and have decent balance between aggressive and defensive strategies. But everything here feels so slow, not only with the movement, but also during attacks. And I can't speak for every character, but most of the ones I've played with have a nice little combo they can reliably do before the opponent is out of range. And that's not always including the curse techniques you need to do damage, but we'll get back to that. When you're on the defensive, that's where this game feels the worst. Blocking is really slow, and half the time there's a major lag before and after you press the button. Then the dodging is the same, where you have to patiently wait a few seconds after a dodge before you can attack again. 
fights start to feel sluggish after a while and it gets much worse if you end up needing to fight more than one enemy at a time. When you're doing 2v2 fights, that's where the gameplay feels more natural. Things won't be as slow since there's always something happening on screen. But when you run into situations where it's 1v2 or even 2v1, that's where the cracks start to show up. Nobody would argue how fun it is to jump somebody. We see it happen in the anime and it's even fun doing it here. And that's when you lay a beat down and don't let your enemy get up for a second. That's where the two player combat feels most fun, but where it feels the worst is when you're the one getting jumped. And if there were better options to counter and dodge against more than one enemy, I'd probably be cool with it. I just can't say I'm having a fun time getting focused on by two dudes at the same time. Pause. Now the idea of cursed attacks being the only way to really do damage sounded like a unique and fresh idea on paper, but in practice it doesn't end up feeling the same way. Some characters have certain combos and attacks that are filled with cursed energy making them easier to play as and win as. For example, the curses that you can play as alongside characters like Nobara and Isidori. Gojo even has a few skills that can kill in as little as one shot, which ain't fun to fight against. They try to make things more fair by making it so you need to build up your energy bar by using regular combos. But once you finally get that energy bar to a good enough point, you're pretty much encouraged to spam special attacks until the enemy loses. Since curse techniques are the only way to do damage, you can find yourself getting hit with spam left and right, and that can lead to some lame finales and battles. Like I didn't expect this to be a super balanced game, but with that being the gameplay, it can be very disappointing. Despite that lack of balance, I do like that they keep the characters true to their own techniques. I only watch the anime myself, but I know that there's plenty of sorcerers out there with fighting styles that just don't make sense. So for a character like Inumaki to have his cursed speech and then add in a button for him to use throat medicine adds something unique. And even though Bara has some cool moves you can use with the straw doll technique. It doesn't work well for keeping everyone on the same level, but it's definitely true to what you'd expect from everybody. Love it or hate it, you can take that part however you feel is best. One cool thing is a separate mode called Rush Battle where you can equip items and fight with another person against cursed spirits. Rush Battle does add something fresh that I wasn't expecting to see. It doesn't add too much more content since it gets repetitive pretty fast, but I always prefer some PvE co-op so I can't complain too much. I appreciate the option to do more than just fight against another playable character. But does it make this worth the full price though? I wouldn't count on it. If you wanted to buy this thinking, oh, at least I can do couch co-op with my friends, then I got some bad news for you. There is no offline multiplayer at all. So even if you wanted to play this with a group of friends, everyone has to own a separate copy of the game. Like, I get that online is the biggest move for fighting games, but there's no reason why they couldn't put in couch co-op for at least the rush battle mode. Or hell, put it in for a free battle mode where two people can play on the same console against other people online. Then that leads us to the free battle mode, which definitely goes to show how much they really did not plan this game out. Take a look at the free battle menu and you can see that they just entirely gave up. You'd expect to have the regular character selects like we have for the online, but no, it's not here. It's a straight up menu where you don't see anything you're picking. Even the stages don't have a preview image so you can see what you're choosing. And what about the background music? Well, you don't need to hear what any of those tracks sound like. Just pick one at random and pray it's the song you wanted. Out of everything I've seen in this game so far, this is the one thing that just screamed that it's straight up lazy. Like, I won't talk too much crap about the people who do find some stuff in this game fun, but I can't take you seriously if you excuse this sort of thing. When other modes in the game already have this locked down, why would the free battle have this big mess of words with nothing else useful? Now personally, my favorite parts are between the music that comes directly from the anime and the different costumes you can swap out. That's obviously not important in the slightest, but it makes me think that the bright side of this 
game's existence is purely to satisfy the most basic fans. The ones who don't care to do anything but to play with their favorite characters. Compared to most other anime arena fighters or even fighting games in general, this is very average. Do I think it's the worst thing I've played in my life? No, but it's clearly not something I'd come back to after a month. With a sea of new releases coming out, I wouldn't be shocked if this gets forgotten about before it's even been out for a month. And I can get into a rant about what kind of game this could have been, but that's a huge topic that I'll save for another day. But looking at the other games created by these developers, you gotta wonder what was going through their heads when they made this. It's developed by Biking, the same company who made both of the My Hero 1 Justice games and Ultra Rumble. Those are some titles that I don't see getting a massive amount of praise, but they haven't had nearly as much hate as Curse Clash is getting. So why did they fumble the bag so hard on this? My best guess is that they wanted to capitalize on the popularity surrounding season two of the anime, because otherwise it doesn't make a ton of sense why they'd be working on both this and Ultra Rumble at the same time. Because they clearly have a priority on Ultra Rumble with a bunch of those characters getting constant updates. And they even had a brand new stage get released for season three. If anything, you can tell that that's where they're putting all the hard work in. I looked a little bit deeper and found another game they developed called Rise of the Incarnates. And you might ask why I'm mentioning this old random ass game, but looking at the gameplay, it looks really similar to what they did with Curse Clash. They both have 2v2 battles as the main focus, they're both arena fighters, and they even have a similar layout. So my thought is that they took that idea, reskinned it as a jujutsu game, and shipped it out as a very quick cash grab. And I can't say without a doubt that that's correct, but please let me know what you think about that in the comments. Let me know what you think about Curse Clash 2, since I'm very sure that everyone has something that they want to say about it at this point. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and I'll see you all in the next video.